My name is William Frode de la Forêt. I'm the Artistic Director of Corp Community Art Link. Corp Community Art Link is a community art organization that exists for 30 years. Our main aim is to make art with people, so to engage them in different project process where we use art to build big project that will generally happen in the public space. We do parades and street spectacle, murals, and really passing on skills and sharing skills with other people and working with everyone to make that. Making art and making things and just being creative is something that absolutely everyone and anyone can do. We did a big survey on the north side in 2006, um, from that survey, it emerged that people were thinking there was not a lot happening on the north side of the city culturally, and that they had no place also where to go and participate in two things. So we decided to look at a project that would reflect that. We pick up Sawen because it's something that was belonging to the people. So we started with a cardboard kind of dragon and around, I don't know, 30, 40 children. Then a few volunteers. We did plenty of masks. We created a small situation and it's a pure grassroots event. It was not decided by somebody in an office and I think that's why it worked because families had family inside, friends, etc. And it has continued to grow like that and to grow more and more as a platform for community group. Oh, we have lots of different groups that are taking part in the Dragon. Our community groups that we give facilitated workshops to our National Learning Network, uh, Susha Inclusive Arts and Blackpool CAP. Blackpool CAP is a day service here in Blackpool. Um, CAP stands for Community Access Programme. So what we do with our lads, we have eight supportive people in our day service. And what we try to do is try to get out and about of the community and get involved in community projects. <laughs> Uh, now we're going to put some masking tape that you can see. What color would you like to paint it? Okay. Nice. Right. So what about we... ah! <laughs> have an incredibly energetic group. It's a real pleasure to work with, with those people. Like they bring something really fresh and all the time exciting on, on their ideas are just a pleasure to push. You could arrive to people and do like... Okay. It's fantastic, it's great, it's for the lads to come in here. They're so used to it now and they've connected, they've made a great relationship and they know them really well now and they're comfortable coming in here and it gives them an opportunity to express themselves through art. I think this is the most important thing about this organisation because uh, people come here because they're curious and then they find out to have a skill that they didn't know or a self-confidence that they might have been lucky enough, you know. Brenda. Every time I'm holding a workshop, people start to tell me after a while, oh, it's so therapeutic to do this. And it doesn't matter if you do it with a goal, if you do it because uh, you have nothing else to do. It's something that anyway, you do it for the community, but works for yourself as well. So my name is Adrian Brady. I'm an instructor with the National Learning Network in Holly Hill. Take this off for a second. One of my students gave me this, um, and I'm a, a rehabilitative instructor on the Directions program. Every year we kind of get together and we have a brainstorming session with one of the current community arting facilitators. And in fairness, this year Francesca, who's she's brilliant, she's full of energy. She asked us um, what we would like to do, and I, I just sat back and as the students were talking, but I just kind of noticed it was like. Even the way the students were positioned, it was almost like a mad house tea party. So I mentioned it to them. What about if we did like Alice in Zombieland instead of Alice in Wonderland? And uh, once you give them a little bit of inspiration, they go off on a tangent. Then they really quickly identified with each character they wanted to work with. And they very quickly kind of came up with a, a really kind of tight idea of what they wanted to do within the parade. And we're not going to be calling each other by our right names, we'll be calling each other by our right character names, aren't yeah. we? Aren't we? Where are we? Queen of Arts! She got walking. Oh. What we have is we're going to be playing uh, croquet. Uh, so we made uh, flamingo skeletons and we're going to be playing with Dabre. 
So instead of having a, a ball, we have a brain because we're zombies. <laughs> For this year, because it's also the 30th anniversary of the company, we decided to um, celebrate ourselves. So we made this big cake with them. We modified it every time and now we are turning it into something creepier, you know, because it's Halloween. The cake is built in a way that is going to be wobbly and look like by the movement we do that it's going to fall off on the crowd. So and we are all trying to save it or trying to stop it. This team this year for the parade is we're kind of um, a scary school. So they're all school children and teachers and there's a headmaster and he's a werewolf. So they're going to be really bold school children. They're going to be, we're going to have a big blackboard and they're going to be writing all scary and silly things on it. Every time the parade stops, okay, and you can all go around the board with the teacher who can be like that to you. So it's kind of a school of different evils that um, we're just going to parade through. It's, it's going to be fantastic and they've created their own props and all the costumes, so it's going to be amazing. The idea of the dragon came from, I thought at the time that I had never seen a skeleton of a dragon and that it would be really interesting to approach that, to create a skeleton that didn't exist and how to transform that into a giant puppet. Again, the idea of having people working together to move an animal or something like that, that will represent a bit more. The dragon's been worked on every year. Sometimes you find parts in it that you don't remember. You're doing archaeology on the dragon at times. I mean, every year changes. Every year new parts are added or pieces are changed or, you know, it's, it's never exactly the same. It's, it's never like it's done and it's never going anywhere. Things are changed, things are improved every year. My name is Karen, I'm a dance coach in Cork for several years and I've been working with Art League for many occasions. So my workshop consists in preparing the dancers, make sure that the um, skeletons are safe <laughs> because they are very big and then I train them, uh, help them make some moves, what is doable, what is safe and then we end up doing choreographies for the, for the parade. So it can be a choreography for the march or a final choreography as we land in the last part. We also then have lots of other groups who come in on the day itself, like Joe Moriarty School of Dance, um, Tribe Dance Academy. We have Cove Animation Team, Mexicans in Cork. We have a couple of schools who are coming into it this year, like Mayfield Community School. We have North Mon Secondary School. There's plenty more groups. There's so many that I try to keep them all in my head and, and reel them off is tricky. The parade happens uh, at night time. Um, we have a very limited time to get ready, to get everyone into costumes. And throughout this, in a couple of hours, we need to get everybody face painted. So it's always, absolutely manic um, the I'm, I'm sure other people will have speaking about this but I feel I need to speak about this the lack of funding that they receive so because it's shows who like this is not a commission the, the dragon of Shandon it shows who put it together every year so we have to find bits of fundings everywhere all the time and it's really a race against the clock every year. With the Dragon of Shandon, we would fundraise. So we would collaborate with local fundraisers. And then we would also launch an online shop uh, that sells Dragon merch. So we have prints by all of the facilitators and workers in Artlink. Then we also have funding from Falcher Ireland and Cork City Council and the Arts Council. Almost half of our income is matched by benefit and kind. So things that people do for us like even, you know, giving us spaces in the marina market to do fundraisers. Uh, we get paint from Pat McDonald Paints. We don't have really enough funding to kind of match our ambition either. So it's a lot of work. <laughs> no matter what limitations there are, um, 
the counterbalances, people that come here, that have come here for years, so they just arrived and get um, empowered through the process that everybody can help, uh, and everybody's an artist. Um, that magic makes any limitation disappear. It's people's enthusiasm and hard work and going far beyond what's required, you know, to make everything happen. So we're all performing under the art link, but we come from all varieties of types of groups in the community, which it just shows diversity and, you know, equality within that. So I think that's amazing to show that. Hundreds of people and um, maybe up to a hundred different community groups have been involved over the years as well. So a lot of people have met people through art link and I think we have created a community around it. We should remember that Halloween, or uh, no, I don't remember the right Irish way shaman, I guess it is, was born in Ireland and then became Halloween in the US. So what we are doing here, we are the only company who does this, which is an ancient celebration and we are, you know, giving back to, to the Irish people and like all the people who lives in Cork. A dragon feels like it's a myth in Cork City already. It feels like it's owned by the people of Cork. It's kind of something that carries its own momentum. I see students who never heard of it still, and on the night, they come into this amazing Mardi Gras, the brilliant atmosphere, the, the vibe is fantastic, and um, it gives the community a tremendous sense of pride. Get on the streets on the 31st of October. <laughs> All right, and try to involve your children or your sister, your brother into uh, supporting the art link because it's really deserves it. People feel this is kind of our great and they look forward to it every year. It brings so many different groups together and people who may not have come into contact with each other or people who may not have seen what others can do. And on that night, we all get to come together and just take over. And that's, that's brilliant. Everybody leaves with a smile. It might be raining, everyone might be wet, but you don't feel it anymore. I think we need events with a barrier, events that reflect um, the atmosphere and the enthusiasm of the people of the city. And I think that's one of the best things we can have in a town. Like we all want to have our city that are breathing with imagination, with, with energy, and we want to see our children, our, our friends enjoying and expressing themselves.